Many of you have been following our solar mesh tastic builds and our Raspberry Pi powered BBS, but one common request has come up time and time again, and that's a solar powered BBS build. The problem there is that the Raspberry Pi is just too power hungry for a practical solar setup. Well today, that challenge is no more as we now have an all-in-one device featuring a LoRa radio and a power-efficient Linux computer, making it the perfect heart of a Linux-powered solar build, fully capable of running our BBS and much more. So join me as we dive into our latest solar build. To start things off, meet Femtofox, a Raspberry Pi-sized computer with an onboard 30 dB LoRa radio. At the heart of it is this tiny little Linux computer called a Luckfox, which is running a light version of Ubuntu called Foxbuntu, developed by the Femtofox team. This allows it to be much more than just a standard meshtastic node. It's a fully capable, self-sustaining communications hub where you can of course run the Linux native version of Meshtastic, but also run software alongside it like our popular BBS. Not only that, they even have a software package manager where you can easily install other cool software as well, all without needing to know Python or Linux. It's all menu driven and can be done via a web browser, making it super easy to use. Before we continue though, this device was sent to me by Open Source Country, who is one of the developers that has an Etsy shop where these are being sold here in the US. For those of you in Europe, another one of the developers, Nam de Tom, also has an Etsy store where these are for sale as well. A link to both stores will be in the build list in the video description. Now, a brief history of the Femtofox. It began as a bold idea for a solar-powered BBS node, and a fan of our BBS named Noon on Discord set out to make it a reality. But with the Raspberry Pi Zero from our original BBS build being too power-hungry, alternatives were needed. After testing multiple Linux boards, Noon discovered the Luckfox Pico Mini, which stood out for its exceptional power efficiency. After the discovery, she reached out to me to pitch the idea of a solar-powered BBS video, and there was of course only one possible answer to that. There were challenges, however, as the Luckfox's stock Ubuntu image was severely limited, and networking proved to be a major challenge, with only USB tethering working out of the box. After extensive testing and with critical help from the community, Nude managed to enable Ethernet support. Seeing the hard work being done, Tom, known as Namde Tom on Discord, stepped in, bringing his PCB design and hardware expertise to the project. Meanwhile, Noon reached out to Open Source Country, who tackled Linux optimizations, developed key kernel modules, and built the SDK used to burn the images. However, this wasn't just the work of three people. The Femtofox wouldn't have been possible without the support of the wider Meshtastic community. Contributors like Josh, along with Meshtastic developers Mark Burse and Jonathan Bennett, who you're probably familiar with from the Meshtastic YouTube channel, were a huge help in this project. Too many people to name really, but the Meshtastic community as a whole really played a role in making this project a reality. After thousands of hours of collective effort, the Femtofox and Foxbuntu operating system were born, making today's solar BBS build possible. The board and Foxbuntu operating system are all open source with details available on the Femtofox GitHub page. There's a community edition of the board with all of the details available on the GitHub page along with the bill of materials for those of you familiar with submitting Gerber files for PCB manufacturing. For those of you who aren't familiar with that process, don't worry as they also offer an assembled pro version that can be purchased and includes the following added features not available on the community version. As far as setup goes, it's super simple and requires no Linux knowledge. Simply power it on via the USB-C port, hook it up to your network via an Ethernet cable, open up a browser and put in femtofox.local colon 7681 in the address bar to reach the web interface where you can log in. After logging in, running the command sudo femtoconfig will get you into the config menus where we can configure all aspects of the device, including a settings wizard to guide you through the process. Foxbuntu comes preloaded with a tool named Control by PDX Locations, which will allow you to configure all of the Meshtastic settings for the device in a familiar menu structure if you've used Meshtastic before. 
Speaking of software, there's a software manager which will allow the easy install of software like RVBS with no Linux or Python knowledge required. Just a few simple menu selections will get you going. The MeshTastic web client is also built into the system and can be visited by reaching femtofox.local without the colon and port number we used earlier. Now we'll be taking a deeper dive into the femtofox and setup in a later video for this solar build when we go ahead and flash the Foxbuntu operating system to an SD card and configure everything, but just wanted to point out some highlights of the system in this video. Now let's take a look at the enclosure and solar side of things. This new solar setup addresses a number of things. While the previous setup shown on this channel had a solar panel that was overkill in most situations, if your batteries ever happen to get too low, the rack boards suffer from brownout, which meant having to physically go to the device and get it up and running again. While this may be fine for a node at home with easy access, this becomes an issue for nodes that are harder to reach. Brownouts are not an issue with the Femtofox, however, so if the battery gets too low where it shuts off, it'll come back online on its own with no user intervention needed. The software will even start back up on its own, so if you're running our BBS, that service will come back online when the system does as well. A major advantage of this new solar setup is its simplified build process. The previous design required drilling, cutting, gluing the solar panel on, and soldering on battery holders, which deterred many of you. With this new build, no major enclosure modifications or soldering is required. Another benefit of this new solar build is the enclosure itself mounts to the back of the solar panel with an air gap between the enclosure and the panel. This helps with airflow and keeps the enclosure's interior cooler and shields it from direct sunlight. In addition to that, the Femtofox board includes pinholes for a kill switch where Noon prefers to add a thermal fuse that cuts power if temperatures exceed 176 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius. Another benefit of this setup is network connectivity. The Femtofox supports Wi-Fi, but not every Wi-Fi adapter is supported, so be sure to check out the compatible adapters listed on their GitHub page. If using Wi-Fi, it's important to note that Wi-Fi will increase power consumption. I've tested it running 24-7 here in Tennessee on this 15-watt solar panel, and while it worked well, extended cloudy periods can drain the battery. Now fortunately, it automatically recovers when sunlight returns. Now this brings us to another feature, which is the remote Wi-Fi trigger via the MeshTastic admin channel. If you don't need constant Wi-Fi or anticipate periods of low sunlight, you can remotely toggle Wi-Fi on and off using this feature. Do note that this doesn't completely cut off power to the USB port, so there will be a slight power draw still, but power consumption is significantly reduced when turning off Wi-Fi. Now, why might you want to use Wi-Fi? Well, you may want to access the MeshTastic web client for sending messages back and forth, or you may want to use Contact for messaging back and forth, which is a terminal-based MeshTastic client written by PDX Locations. Or if you're like me, you plan on using our BBS alongside GS8 Call to allow for receiving bulletins from around the world via HF. So as you can see, this latest build adds a ton of capability thanks to it being based on the Femtofox and the Foxboon 2 operating system. If you want to build one for yourself, we'll have links to the shops with the Femtofoxes, along with links to our shop for kits with the custom mounts, mounting hardware, USB cables, and more, along with affiliate links for everything else needed. In the next video, we'll be going through the simple build process and then go through the setup and configuration of the Femtofox. But that'll do it for this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on our next video for our new solar build. Hope to see you there. Thank you all and have a good one.